Welcome everybody to the uh, classroom. It's a bloody sandy day here in the neighborhood and we are talking about shields. Now, as you can see, I left my weapon wall the way I normally have my weapon wall because uh, you can't put any shields on it, so I didn't need to clear it off. Although, I've got my two lovelies on either end here, so we'll be getting to them here in a minute. Got some guys here on the table. I don't have any on me except this bad boy, which I recently found out can be a shield! Thanks to this lovely commenter. Yeah, dude, you rock. <laughs> he uh, he told me how to do this uh, in the comments. By the way, uh, real quick before I start this episode, I just want to thank everybody who's watched uh, Shatterblade Fun and all my other videos. I never thought I'd get a video over 100 views in my wildest dreams. I never thought I'd get a video over 20 views in my wildest dreams. And it is at time of this recording, sitting at 452 views. Holy crap! I am so thankful for you guys right now. That is something I never thought I'd see in my lifetime. Uh, and it feels good, man. It feels real good. Um, let's get down to the brass text, shall we? We're going to start off with this little guy on top, the buckler. The buckler is the worst version of a battlefield shield, but one of the best versions of a dueling shield the world will ever see. Um, bucklers were not meant to be used to block arrows, javelins, throwing axes, anything missile related. What this guy was meant to do was, and I know anyone who's ever played Dark Souls cringes and dies a little when they hear this word, it was meant to parry. <laughs> they'd come in with their weapon and you'd ting, knock it out of the way, and then you'd counter with your own. And that, that's what this guy was entirely meant to do. That's why they're made of solid metal and why they're light. They have to be light and fast so you can put them in the way of the incoming attack. But because of how small they are, they don't take up a lot of your view. They're not going to get caught on your weapon. They're, they're nice, light, and portable. And they were used by duelers. They were used by knights and plate mail who were going to be in the fray. They were used by all, all kinds of those, those renaissance-level people. Definitely not a Dark Ages, I'm going to siege the castle with this thing to stop the wall of arrows coming down at me. No, that's a that's bad idea. Um, next up is a lighter shield that you'd sometimes give to infantrymen, but usually to cavalry. Uh, this little guy is a heater shield. And it says, oh, this just says medium shield. But they're, they're typically called heater shields. Uh, if we go down here, you can, you can look at them here. A uh, medium-sized shield reinforced with iron around the edges. My favorite thing about this shield is that you, if you look through the cracks here, it changes as I move because there's actually a gap in those planks. This is a wonderful example of a quick and, and wonderful aesthetically made quick uh, shield to give to your infantry. You know, oh, I need to armor 300 levy by the end of the week so that we can go march on that castle. Give them this piece of shit. <laughs> Although typically these kinds of shields called heater shields, if you uh, if you look at this one, no, not that one. Wait, uh, oh, there's no regular heaters in here. Um, there is a wooden heater shield, um, which which is this kind of thing. But it is a boss, even though it doesn't need a boss, and that kind of pisses me off. Uh, but heater shields like this were typically given to cavalry. They were small enough they wouldn't get in the way of you thrusting your spear down off the sides of the horse, you know. Or, or if, you're, if you're melee cavalry, you know, you, you can still reach around the shield and block with it. But it was big enough it'd protect your chest from, like, arrows coming in at you as you bum-rush the cavalry. Though this would never be given to, like, heavy cavalry or, or shock cavalry. This was usually given to scouts light cavalry, skirmishing cavalry, somebody they need to be quick and swift and wasn't expected to take a whole lot of hits anyways. They, they'd get something like this. And it does that job really well. Now, because it's made of wood, axes are going to be its bane. As you can see, the axe goes through it for a second. There's a good one. That's because that's what axes were meant to do, was go right through wooden shields. Um, yeah, look at that. Oh, bit deep into the goat stag or gawk stad i always get the, the 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 k and the d mixed up on you it's a gawk stad not a goat stag god stack yes i'm gonna fact check myself live right now 
Give me, give me, give me. Yep, Gokstad. Gokstad shield. Which I'm going to be using with this spiot, which was a Viking spear, because, you know, realism. <laughs> Anywho, a, a shield like, no, get on the table. A shield like that is something I'd love to use if I were, like, a cheap scout infantry, because it's light enough, I'm going to be able to block at least a few swings. Especially if you block with the edges of the shield, you're going to be able to stop swords all day. But the wood would probably stop a few arrows coming my way and might help me get home to my, my wife and my kids and our tiny shitty farm somewhere on the countryside. Uh, next up is the uh, the kite shields. Come on, kite shield. Come alive. All right. You know what? You're just going to lie there, so I'm just going to pick you up like that. Kite shields like this are Shadowversity's wet dream. <laughs> he has a war boner for these kinds of shields. Because... Well, they're big at the top, kind of like the tower shields and other, like, kite, you know, like, like the big knight shields. They, they taper down really quick to save weight. Plus, people aren't going to be aiming at my shins. People could be aiming at my chest, my head, and I can block all that with one of these. Whoa, tracking, come on now. I can block all that with one of these. And if we need to form a shield wall, mine would be here. My buddy would have his like this, set so those slopes interlock. And it would go and go and go down like that. And that, that would still be able to form a kite shield. Not the strongest kite shield. Because hitting something at the end here, as you can see, that, that's a lot of leverage at a far away point. Which is why it's okay that it's down by my toes. If something hits it, it's just going to smack me in my metal shin guards. But if you've got a dude down on the ground kneeling, holding the shield like this, and it gets hit towards the top, that might actually create a decent gap in our forces, which is why the, the Gokstad, Gokstad shield, which wherever the fuck it went, um, they were often overlapped, the same way that, that the Greeks did their hoplons uh, for their phalanx while they'd overlap them. That way, if they got hit on the far outside, uh, it wouldn't break the wall. You know, It, it wouldn't knock a hole in your wall because you've got two shields there and now you've got to move. Um, I actually need one of these, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to respawn you just in case. Because, like, the whole downside with punch shields, which are shields that have this central handle, is if you hit the edge, you can rotate the whole shield with very little force, whereas if I try to push here closer to the center, it, it doesn't move as much. The whole shield moves. Whereas if I push here, I could just, I could just rotate that fucker all day. But pushing right here, see how it moves my whole arm? Or even pushing up here, even though I've got this handle aligned to give me straight leverage up and down, it can still rotate decently. That That's what made punch shields less favorable for things like how this Norman shield works, which had a strap here to, to strap it to my arm. The Greeks had those straps as well on their shields, which prevented the shield from rotating when it got hit really hard, which made phalanxes hard to break. Uh, moving on to the Romans, the Romans had scutum, which were a tower shield, much like this, which they would hold by a punch handle, oh Jesus, right there in the central area, right there in that central boss area. Um, kind of like this, if I break my wrist real quick, they'd hold it like this. Um, I prefer tower shields that, that allow you to hold it up here like this, because then I can I can keep it lower to cover like my legs and I can rest a spear on top in this divot and know it's not going to slide out or it's, it's not going to, you know, get in the way. But tower shields were a wonderful improvement over the hoplon because they protected your upper body. They protected your legs pretty well. And you didn't have all that excess weight on the sides. Granted, you didn't have your buddies to rely on because your shields no longer overlapped, but the guy behind you, would actually take his shield and he put it up top like this to create a tent. And you essentially just had a giant shield block marching forward, called a Tetsuo formation or a turtle formation. Um, another great thing about tower shields, especially curved ones like this one, is that arrows that try to hit the sides or attacks that hit the sides have a chance to just glance off, chance to just, just skip right off the side there. Now, as you can see, Hitting the bottom of this thing rotates it a lot, but if I plant it, no more rotation, which meant a defensive Tetsuo, where they actually take a knee, boom, and they plant the shield down. The next guy has his shield, 
you know, planted over top of mine, I'm aiming through the gaps that the bottoms of our shields make to, to jab out at people, or I'm, I'm poking around the side, but we've got this thing locked down on the bottom, we've got it locked out over our heads, locked out on our sides. We're an unstoppable block of shield, and, and that's what made shields so amazing, because arrows to the chest, wonderful way to kill a guy. Spear to the chest, wonderful way to kill a guy. Shield, stop both arrow and spear. Um, now, shield combating technology is just as old as shield technology. The oldest of them being this guy. Because all that weight in such a tiny blade, that's going to break a shield. That's, that's going to eventually crack through that tower shield and, and destroy your shield. The Falks was famous for getting through the Roman shield wall. Because they didn't have these metal bosses on top originally. Original Scutums did not have this metal lining to them. And so what would happen was the folks would come down, hit the top, and cut with the grain of the wood. And just split the shield till about right here where the boss would kick in and stop the blade. But that is enough to render that shield almost invalid. Um... They later invented the Armored Legions, which had shields just like this. Armored circular, or armored uh, circumference. Thank you very much, brain. Uh, central boss linings and, and other stuff like that to, to really build up that protection on that shield to make it more durable. Prevented the Falks from just cleaving it in half and made the Armored Legions able to actually go toe-to-toe -to -toe with something that has nowhere to go but through. Um, all right. We're going to get down to the brass tacks of it. I know there's a tons of other shields I haven't mentioned. Uh, things like the spiked pavis, because I wish I had a regular pavis, but I don't. <laughs> Normal pavis would be a lot like a tower shield, but they'd have like two spikes coming out of the bottom. And you'd thunk them into the ground, you'd kneel down behind them with your crossbow, and you'd fire over the top. They were meant to give you a bit more protection from enemy arrows, whether you're sieging or whether you're in a field battle, your marksman would stay alive a little longer. And we all know that arrows, as in our last episode, Arrows can really swing a fight because you can kill somebody before they ever even get the chance to kill you. So if your archers are able to lay down fire without getting shot, you're going to have a massive advantage in that fight. That's what made longbows so effective. You could hit the enemy before they were ever even close enough to hit you. Shields made it so you could get closer, yeah, but all they needed to do was get either a lucky shot in or they needed to pepper that shield enough to get lucky to put one right through where your arm was. You know, shields aren't perfect. Not, nothing's perfect. No weapon is perfect. Um, the spike pavis here that I got, it, it is far more of a dueler's weapon than a sieging weapon. Because it's, it's frankly, it's very small. Um, as far as pavis go, you're tiny. But, I have blocked arrows with this guy. You, you've all seen it on stream. I've been able to stop arrows and fireballs with this bad, but wow, tracking, thank you. I've been able to stop fireballs with this guy by putting him up just right. Um, the spike on the front, it did exist. Don't get me wrong. This guy did exist, but he was more of a dueler's shield than anything else. He, he was more of that, that late renaissance, roughly around the buckler era kind of shield, who you'd call on when you were either defending the castle and you weren't going to go up on the walls. You were a defender who's in the courtyard waiting for them to break in, or you were the one attacking the castle, and you were only going to be deployed after most of the archers on the wall had been dealt with, or you had a gallery to protect you. Um, so yeah, those are just kind of some of those things that, that the Pavis, especially that Spike Pavis, would be good at. We're going to get down to the brass tacks here. The, the part you all love, where I fuck up and miss my shield. <laughs> where I take on a few enemies to show you how effective these shields really are. Um, first one, we're going to fight uh, Viking style. Now, I know some of you guys are going, but that's not an axe. Vikings didn't just use axes. Vikings were famous for their spears. Now, she has a club, and she's going for my toes. So I've, I've got to make sure I hold that shield a bit lower. The downside to the goat stag shield is it blocks a lot of your vision. So you want to keep it kind of here off to the side. That way it's not in the way of the fight, and it's not in the way of your arms. You, you want to kind of keep it here when you're in melee range, when you're actually fighting. 
but most of the time just keep it right here on your side. Uh, the reason you want that on your side here, I'm gonna I'm gonna get another one out here to show you. Uh, the reason you want it on your side here is so that if he comes up to me, now he's got an axe. Yeah, he's got an axe, so he's ready. I can bring it out in front of me and put it back because I can at any moment punch with it by keeping it cocked on my side. Alright, it is it is locked. My elbow is touching my side. My forearm's at like a 90 degree kind of angle here. Uh, you guys can't see that. I don't need the arms in this game are stupid. Um, but at any moment, I can pull it out in front of me, drop it low, bring it high, or thrust it out. It is ready to deploy. And because I'm blind on my right side, hence why I'm a lefty, uh, this is protecting my blind side, even if I'm not looking there. All right? It's protecting the side that that doesn't have the, the weapon. You know, it's, it's constant protection for my blind spot, which a lot of shields, you know, they, they'd be carried on your, they'd be carried on the left. <laughs> now she came around to the side without my shield. So what I need to do there. Oh, she went for my toes. So I got to drop the shield. It's hard to use a shield reactively. You, you definitely want to engage more with the shield proactively. But if you're good about it, you can get her perfectly with it. Huh? Bam! Boom! Bam! Plant her with that last one. But yeah, that's kind of how that would go. Um, that is just a taste of like Greek and, and Viking fighting. But when the shield wall's broken and you've got to get messy, here we go. So she comes in, I come back with that punch and that axe because remember an axe like this cannot block an axe like this they'd cut right through the handle which is why shields and axes were such a horrifying combo because a sword can block so you don't need a shield if you have a sword but if you have an axe you need a shield for your defense because an axe is all hack all day all offense all day so this comes in with the hits and then this is my sole defense. And it, it, it essentially, they, they complement each other so well. They're so synergistic. Just like with my shield. I can't block with this. They're going to hack it in half. So I block with this and strike with this. And it, it creates a very synergistic combo. All right, I'm going to put you up. I'm going to get you down. This is personally my favorite of the shields defensively. If I was to ever fund an army, like like a, a medieval army, not like a modern army. If I was to ever fund a medieval army, now let me just quick find the sword here. Nope. Nope. Yes. I'd give them swords like this, shields like this. Because this protects the legs, protects the body, protects the torso, and this sword is so much... Like, it, it's a long sword with a thick taper, but a good taper. A nice, solid point. They could stab easily between the gaps in the shields, come in with those hacks, has a hand guard to protect your fingies. It's it's a wonderful sword to pair with a, with, with a shield. Now, this is a Viennan sword. This was more of a dueling sword. That little hook there was actually so that they could slip a finger into that little grip for a little bit, a little bit better fencing grip. But... I'm not fencing today. That's what I'm using with it today. So we're gonna we're gonna give you a taste of that Roman glory. First off, with this guy, and the, actually, you know what? Hold on. Oh, look at that! Not even looking at it blocks. It's on my right. I'm actually gonna go uh, like a Traiari, a Roman spear unit. They'd have this shield out in front of them. Now, if she goes for my toes, if she goes low again like they've been doing, uh, it'll it'll block it just because it's already that low. I don't, I don't know. They, they were going for my toes so much earlier. Come on. Go low. You know you want to. Ha. Ha. She never went low. So, yeah. Good thing about this shield is that it offers a lot of protection. Granted, at the expense of it is heavy as fuck. It is a heavy shield. Meaning that I'm not going to be sprinting while carrying this thing. But here, you know, I can I can uh, level my spear on top here. And get those 
Get those cheeky jabs and over the top. <laughs> and with those cheeky jabs, I can kind of give her one for, you know? Uh, because I've got it leveled here, and I can kind of get that action. Now, I can't because of my tracking, but, you know, what you going to do about that? I'm, I'm trying to fix it, but first I've got to get a bit more in my pockets. All right, now we're going at it uh, with a, the classic Hastati style, Gladius and Big Shield. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to block her attack and then counter with my own. Now, I got her with just the tip in the eyeball, it looked like. Yeah, right there underneath her eye, just stabbed right there in the skull. That's gruesome. Probably also not a kill. I mean, I don't... I don't know if there's any brain matter there. I mean, yeah, getting stabbed through the jaw would not be a pleasant experience. But I don't know if I'd call that a kill. So... Oh, she... She got me through the shield. See, she went low that time, and she hit it down here. Hmm? <laughs> so I keep the shield up, but I keep it under my field of view. That way, I can see over the shield... Yeah, that's a kill. Yeah. So yeah, when with with a, a good benefit of a tower shield over a goat stead shield. Oh, I just dropped that. Oh well. <laughs> oh, that was a nice shot. Um, a good benefit of this kind of shield is you can when your uh your arm is so close to the top. When your arm is so close to the top. You can hold the shield lower and be okay because you can now see and all you got to do is raise your arm up. You don't have to hold it off here to your side and bring it out in front of you like the Gokstag just so you can see. The Gokstag. I'm never going to pronounce that right. This is already in front of me. All I've got – and I can, I've still got a full range of motion over the top. It's not in the way. It's protecting me. Um, it, it's a wonderful little thing. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna do something real quick. Uh, no, not you. There we are. Line this up real quick. Eh. 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 That is the downside of wooden shields. Is that they can be penetrated. Now I'm gonna use the dory real quick because it punches so nicely through these shields. I think the Mycenaean would do it as well. They both have really nasty tips. Ah, oh, that's what I wanted. That's where your arm would be. That right there. Ah. Eh. That's where your arm would be. Now the fun, fu uh, fun fact is, oh, it didn't do it this time. But see, look, look at that. <laughs> it pushed itself through. That's through the wood. That's true. I, I didn't even try to stab it into the wood that time. I did it the first time I recorded this uh, on my first try, which was really nice. Um, that can stab through the shield and through the wood. Eh, come on. Pull it out. Ah. Oh, that is really in there. Hey, ah. Holy crap. Ah. And then we drive it. Yeah, look at that. That is right through the wood. Right through the the wood of that shield. That's not a good thing. That's a really bad thing. So then we go back to our shields and we think, well, how are we going to fix that bad thing? And they got stuff like this. Now that's a really freaking ornate version. So let's find something a little less ornate. Here we go. Something like this. Steel top. All right, not not as easy to drive through. Ugh. I could do it, but oh my god, is that so much harder? That little bit of steel. Now that's not a lot of steel. That's not even like an inch of steel. But that that little bit of steel. Makes it so much harder to drive this thing through. I have to kind of use physics to glitch it out. Plus, this is the Mycenaean, or this is the 
the the spear that pe pierces everything. All right, this this spear is broken. This spear is so broken on its ability to pierce. But if you see there, not going through. I got my tower shield right through. Look at that. But barely pierces. And that's for a reason. Um, as weapons got better and as uh, armor got better and stuff, battles became a bit more brutal. And when you had units you didn't want dying on the battlefield, you metal line their shields. You'd use metal and then you'd use leather. And then you would, so it'd be metal, leather, all wrapped around the wood. And what that did was that made the shield that much more durable. But the leather, the leather's the important bit. If it was just metal and wood, uh, something like this bad boy would still crack and dent it. That leather, though, can can be cushioned, smushed. It, it spreads out the impact. So a guy like, a guy like that, a guy like this, a guy like that, not going to do as much damage. Because that leather is going to absorb the impact before it gets to your arm. Shield technology's come a long way. Now, granted, tower shields, when you're looking for protection, they are still the epitome of protection. That's why riot shields are made that way. That's why SWAT shields and bulletproof shields are made that way. A anybody who's played SWAT knows the, the, the look of a tower shield. Anybody who's seen the, the riots that we've had this year knows the look of a tower shield. There's a reason that the SWAT go with a tower shield. It's easy to form a phalanx with tower shields, that Tetsuo formation. It's really easy, really simple. That's what made the Romans so famous for it. Uh, the fact that their soldiers didn't need to train day and night, day and night, day and night to be able to whip themselves into that formation. And if they did train day and night, day and night on that formation, they were unstoppable because they had that thing down. Um, shields have come a long way. Shields are one of the few things that still exist today in our modern, not really in our modern military, but in our modern lives. Shields are some of the few things that still exist today. Uh, that's because you're always going to need to stop something coming at you. You're, you're always going to need to stop it. Same with body armor, all right? You're always going to need to stop it. Um, batons uh, are essentially what this iron bar mace is, you know? Th this thing's just a baton that can't telescope. Um, if I if I look in the book in the Japanese section, you guys will all see a nightstick in there by its real name, the Tanfa, which, as it says here, an Okinawan martial arts weapon. It's less less lethal design went on to inspire police weaponry. It's true though. That's a nightstick for you. You know, very few weapons withstood the the age of gun, and shields are one of them. Because that being able to stop projectiles, especially in the age of gun, is so vital. Being able to stop rocks, stop whatever's being thrown at you is so vital. Um, yeah. Um, I'm gonna wrap up class today with just another thank you for the all the support, all the new subscribers. Um, <laughs> I, I don't monetize these videos. I never am gonna do YouTube as a career. It, it'll probably never be a career thing I do just because I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a great YouTuber. I'm not the best out there, but the fact that over 400 people have seen one of my videos that I literally made recorded, you know, I, I recorded it, edited it and uploaded it in like half an hour. Cause I was really, really stoked about this thing. Um, I, I appreciate it more than anything else. I, I definitely appreciate that. Um, this is the end of our first quarter here in our in our classroom. For those of you who don't have quarters uh, in your school system, you probably have like trimesters. Uh, we're almost done with the first trimester, I guess. Um, or I guess it would be the end of the first trimester. Oh, Jesus, sorry about that. I'm fixing my head strap. Um, we've covered most of the weapon groups I wanted to talk about. Uh, what comes next is talking about different ways around that armor. Um, different ways that the weapons can pair well with each other and the, the different uses for different weapons. Because um, right now we covered the groups, what the groups were good at.
we we talked about daggers. Daggers are stabbing weapons and blah blah blah. But we failed to cover the synergy between this dagger and you know this sword. Well, what's what's what? What do these two have in common? This would be the rapier that you'd be fighting with, and this guy would be your act of mercy. Once you've wounded your opponent, this guy would be stabbed in through the neck to kill. You know, um, a, a lot of daggers have that 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 little bit there, especially when when fighting with rapiers. Um, excels at you know, it, this has no cutting power. All stab all day with a nice little handguard here for that swift motion, but you wouldn't oftentimes murder somebody with that. The actual kill would come from this dagger, dubbed the Act of Mercy, as it was used to finish off an armored opponent. You know, somebody that you've wounded. Um, we didn't talk about the synergy between uh, maces and stuff and uh, like an axe, uh, a mace and an axe, or a mace and a sword as a sidearm. So, because like maces, we talked about them as a main weapon for cracking through that armor, cracking through that, that skull, but we didn't go into how it, it would play really well as a sidearm so that you'd have your main weapon come in here doing the slashing, cutting, and thrusting, and then it would open up a block for that hit. We never talked about dual wielding or anything like that. That is all going to be our second quarter. Uh, the synergy on how weapons play well together. What kind of weapons as an adventurer you'd want to pack. Why you'd want to pack them, stuff like that. Expect more field trips where I uh, don up the arsenal of like famous warriors throughout time. And we fight in different little places outside of our bloody sandy neighborhood. Outside of our beautiful little classroom here. I just noticed that there's a castle in the background of my arena. Maybe we'll make that where we go next. You know, maybe maybe we'll go over there next, and, and we'll have a little fun in the ruins, or or in the citadel. You know, there's so much, so much I want to show you guys. So much left to do, and I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. So, thank you everybody. Class dismissed. <laughs>